Welcome to Sex Ed for Adults. For as long as I can remember, I've always been connected in one way or another to music and dance. Now, in my 30s, I'm a mother of two. I still work a day job for survival, but I'm also allowing myself to be great at what I'm actually great at. And let me tell you, it feels good. I'm learning to find the middle ground, feet on the ground with my head in the clouds type of things. It ups and flows. But I'm learning to navigate and learning a lot about who I am in the process. Always learning, always dreaming, always growing, always loving. That's what keeps us alive. Johnson, author of Dancing Over 30, and you are watching Sex Ed for Adults. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so excited about today. Um, not sure what we're going to get into, but I'm ready. Let's go. All right. I'm ready. I'm excited to have you here. This is kind of like sex. We're going to have a flow. We're going to have a rhythm and we'll adjust as necessary. So thank you for braving it and coming out to be with us. I like to jump right in, right? I'm going to warm you up a little bit. I'm going to give you a little foreplay and then we're going to really dive deep. So in your bio, you That's talk great. about being a black dancer in a white world, starting off young and then still being in that space in your 30s. Talk to me a little bit about what that's been like. Um, it's really kind of a beautiful process because it parallels life so much for me personally. Um, and just the journey to find yourself and the journey to, to feel confident and feel um, validated just by being who you are. Um, starting dance, you know, I was in an all white studio, just completely bad, like all ballet. Um, and it was way out 30 minutes away from where we lived. Um, and just feeling like I needed to be more like the dancers in the class that I was in. I was supposed to be more like the white girls, like try to be more like them, try to be more like them, even through um, like getting more serious about dance and um, really choosing my disciplines and what I was going to study and dive into, I would choose things that would not um, point me out as the black girl. So I didn't do a lot of hip hop and tap because I wanted to do the ballet. I wanted to, to show that I was good enough. I wanted to show that I had what it took to be that poised. And that's a very interesting way to think about, you know what I mean? Like why, why is not now we look at 2020, you know, all the all the dances from black vernacular are what's what it is now like that is pop mm -hmm. culture black culture is pop culture and mm -hmm. people want to do what we do um it is still something to be a ballerina um but we're seeing that that's not really where it's at like who you are be who you are not saying that i wasn't who i was but my what i felt like was the most important um or, or what would make me a valid dancer um, mm -hmm. is, is was ballet. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's interesting because often in this world we talk about the concept of intersectionality, and what that is is how the different parts of your identity kind of intersect with the world and how you're perceived, how you're treated, how you respond as a result of that. Right. So, mm -hmm. being black and then being a dancer, and how those things played a role in perception. So I think that's an interesting perspective. Um, you also talk about being an artist. Why? Why that word? Why that description? Because with dance, just like with um, visual art or, or um, written work, like it's all an artistry because you're compo like you're painting a picture for somebody. You're composing um, an experience for somebody to feel. Mm -hmm. um, so with dance, that's what we do. You're telling the story of whoever the choreographer is or whatever mm -hmm. the story is that you're telling, or even if it's a personal improv, like you're telling your story and you're making it, you're putting it in a, in a way that people have to sense um, mm -hmm. in a way that they don't typically sense the world mm -hmm. around them. So it makes you feel differently. So what do you think was the piece that you saw, the piece of movement that you saw that moved in your body? Like what, what is one that you can remember that you felt it, you saw it, you experienced it? God, there's so many. Because when I watch, I, that's why I watch dance because that's how I feel every time. <laughs> I mean, if it's 
I was going to say good work, but that's not mm. correct. You know, mm-hmm. if it's work that, that resonates with me, then yeah. every time I'm going to feel like, oh, my God. Um, mm-hmm. the, the youngest I was, I guess, I, when I went to go see Revelations, um, Alvin Ailey Revelations, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. just watching that work and really understanding as a Black girl growing up in America, what those, um, what those pictures that he was painting mm-hmm. looked like and felt like because I knew them through my mm-hmm. grandpa- my grandmother, my great grandmother, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, people around or things that you know, or, you know what I mean? Your neighbors or your friends, you know, mm-hmm. this is the life that you've lived. Mm-hmm. Um, Revelations is a, a dance that um, mirrors black culture in America as just that, you know, mm-hmm. they, they talk about the church, they talk about, I mean, it's, it's mainly based in church, mm-hmm. but they talk about, um, uh, Judith Jameson, she's not the one who danced it when I saw it, I don't think, mm-hmm. um, but she famously um, danced Cry, mm-hmm. which is a solo by this beautiful Black woman who is dressed all in white. Oh my God. It's the, it, I will give you chills. It gave me chills mm-hmm. thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I can hard, see that. You know? So you now you know everybody's gonna go out and try to like YouTube. Oh please do you should you should. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what has movement like in general? What has it done for your life? Like how has it influenced your life? Um, it's that outlet. Well, I, I have a lot of outlets. I write. I do things, but um, it's just a way. I just like it. I just like the way it makes me feel in my body to do it. Number one, it gives me something to strive for because it is a art. It is a, it is a discipline. It mm-hmm. is, you know, people will go as far as it's called dancers, athletes. Um, it is a way that you have to work on your facility mm-hmm. um, and understand your body, how it physically works mm-hmm. um, to work smarter, not harder necessarily. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you're working smarter, it gives you, the freedom to be be more creative with your work and to do more things. Um, So the fact that it's a physical thing um, Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's a very mental and emotional thing as well and spiritual Mm -hmm. thing, um, it's to me a full body experience. Mm -hmm. So has it also been a part of your mental health experience? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, even just going through really horrible things you know dance stays constant um Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I I teach dance because it makes me I have to do it because this is my job so I have to come because a lot of times you know you get in your rut and you're in a bad day you're having a horrible day or it's just really heavy on you on that day you're like you know what I'm not going to go to class today or I'm not Mm going to go to rehearsal today or I'm not going to dance today like I'm not I just can't I don't have it in me today I have Mm -hmm. so many days where I'm like I just don't have it in me But then I show up to the studio and 10 minutes in, even though it's Mm -hmm. teaching young Mm -hmm. girls, I think that's part of the therapy too. Um, Mm -hmm. But just to be in the studio and to be moving, you know, sometimes I forget the girls are even there. I'm like, oh, you guys, you're there. You can dance with me too, if you like, but I need this for me today. (laughs) Yeah, that's your space. That's your grounding. It sounds like that it pulls you back down to earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Love it. So you brought up the body. How do you view the human body? Oh, it's a beautiful thing, in my opinion, especially the female body. I think that the things that our body can do is by speaking from a mother's perspective as well, like the mm. things that your body can do Ooh, tell me are about magical. It. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and the fact that we have this thing to just walk around the earth with to house mm. our soul, you mm. know what I mean? And you do what you will with it. So I would prefer to do something beautiful with it. Mm-hmm. Um, that just highlights all that it is. And you have now shared dance with your daughter, who is oh, a similar yeah. age to my daughter. Tell me about that. So Layla grew up in the wings. She literally, I um, had Layla when I was a junior in college. And my mother lived in Kansas and my father was in Detroit and my sister was in like school at U of M or mm-hmm. she was coming out. Yeah, she was still in Slaney. So everybody was like, <laughs> I got my thing going on, but I can't. Um, so I had her and I was up there by myself and I had to just rely on my friends. And so I would have her and she would come to class with me sometimes and I would just sit her in the, in the corner. I had one professor 
Derek Evans, I'm a jazz professor. And he was like, okay, well, has she eaten? Is she okay? Just put her mm. on the phone. And he let me take class. That was the first time. That was, he was the only person wow. whose class I ever would bring her to. And it was really dire mm-hmm. strict. Um, but he was the first one who made it okay to be like, mm-hmm. yes, you're a mom. Come on. That doesn't mean those things aren't. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't, it doesn't mean stop. Yeah, it doesn't stop. <laughs> Here, that's okay. That's okay. okay. Look, um, we're moms. We're parents. Yeah, we're all happens. these things. It happens, right? Yeah. And this is, this is all the time. So Layla grew up, uh, I would bring her, I'd have her performances and I would be like, listen guys, I need you to stay here with her. I'm gonna go on stage. I'll be back in five minutes. And then mm-hmm. she just grew up backstage. And mm-hmm. then when I moved back to Detroit and started teaching, she um, would be in the class with me and she, she would be crying so loud, hanging on my leg. Like, I'm like, oh my God, this child is so embarrassing. But the, the owner it of the was. studio at the time, she was like, girl, we all got kids, it's fine. And that's how she grew up. And so when she got old enough, I was like, listen, somebody just take her in your class. She turned three or four. We start class. We start kids at two and a half or three. She Mm -hmm. was, I was like, put her in class. And she just stayed forever. And she just kept adding class. Anytime I was there working, Mm -hmm. um, I needed her to be doing something and not hanging on my leg screaming. (laughs) So the more classes she was old enough for, she just started taking them and becoming very good at them. And dance was passed down to you, right? Yes. My parents both dance. My father mm-hmm. is still a dance instructor at Arthur Murray uh, doing ballroom dance, which is so cool to me. And my mother, uh, she really introduced me to dance, really. Um, she was taking an African dance class down at Wayne State on Friday nights. Um, I think it started at six o'clock. So she had to drive from downtown, 30 minutes to get up, me and my sister from school, 30 minutes back downtown wow. to get to this class. So she's like, I'm not taking y'all home. I don't have time. I'm going to yeah. be late. And this is my only outlet. This is my only thing. Like her life was heavy at that time. She was like, mm. this is my thing. Y'all not going to make me miss my thing. So you yeah. coming too. Yeah. So we would go and we would sit and watch. And one day she was just like, come on, take it. Because I remember it was picture day. And on the itchiest dress, it was the worst. And some tights. And she was like, just take your tights off. Come on. And I came. At first, I was really apprehensive. I was like, nobody has on the same thing as <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I took off my tights and I went on this floor and the, the other girls just accepted me and the elders went across first and then the kids wow. went across last and I just became a part of that community and it became a part of who I was. Wow. So she gave you dance, but she also gave you grounding and coping and something to pull back to and now you're passing that on. I think that's beautiful. All right. So in all of this, um, some would say that dance itself can be a sexual experience that can be a source of power and confidence. What are your thoughts about that? I think it absolutely can. I think that it it should be, honestly. Mm. Um, I think that you learn, you learn the importance of your body. And like I was saying, the, the, just the magic of your body, Mm -hmm. Um, what it can do and what it's designed to do. And you, hopefully learn to be unashamed of all things um, and to know how much pleasure can be, um, I want to say mustered up, but how much pleasure can be um, found really just by knowing your body and by being unashamed of moving your body and just being comfortable with it. So is, is that what you teach your girls, freedom and movement, safety in their body, and being able to have confidence and, and, and no shame? Absolutely. Um, I want them to feel, we have girls of all ages, sizes, colors. Well, they're mm-hmm. all pretty much black, but they're different shades of black. <laughs> um, but we want, we want our girls to just be confident, just speak your truth, dance your truth. If you can't speak your truth, you can dance it, you can show it, you can um, live it. You, I think it's a good step. It's a good way to start being able to speak your truth and mm-hmm. to draw your lines and to say, no, this is who I am and that's fine. It's better than fine, actually. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times you, it's so scary to say that to some people, it's yeah. so scary to be like, no, this is, this is it. Yeah. Or this is how I feel and these are my, like, this is, these are my emotions or this is my story. Um, so for a lot of us, it's easier to show that in a way 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then speak it. Yeah. So in dance, talk to me about gender, about sexuality, because that comes up alongside that conversation sometimes where there is that freedom of expression, expression, but there's so many myths around gender and sexuality in dance. Who can dance? What gender can dance? What are you supposed to be? Are you gay? Are you mm-hmm. non-binary? Like, you know, so talk to me a little bit about one, if what your experience has been in that and, and your thoughts. I think that's a, such a relevant question. So many parents don't want their boys to dance because they think it's gonna turn them gay. Mm-hmm. There is no such thing. You can't turn a person gay. Tell me about it. <laughs> That's what I believe. Okay, so I don't. I don't believe that. I believe that. Um, yes, there are more the men that dance I, for whatever reason. For whatever reason, in my experience, the men that I have danced with mm-hmm. are usually gay. Um, but that's just a life choice. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe there's more opportunity to find people who think like you and people who um, believe the same things you believe and uh, you know who live the same kind of lifestyle as you if you're in the same artistic pool yes I believe that I believe that you have more opportunity to find somebody that you gel with if you do the same thing like not saying that all dancers date dancers but you know if people are open to that way of thinking in this community then okay and and if I'm good at doing this thing if my body will will allow me to gracefully do this thing then Mm -hmm. yes I'm going to be a part of this community Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think that the act of dancing will make you gay Um, Mm -hmm. maybe people feel like the more and this is just a really (laughs) I could go for a million years on it Um, but I believe that some people may think that being more in touch with what you need to be in touch with that vulnerability that it takes to share yourself and you know mm-hmm. with people dancing mm-hmm. um i feel like maybe that is not m- masculine maybe that's not you mm-hmm. know what people would view as um but i think that it's just a, a humanities thing you know if you want to be a better human you should yeah. try to dig deep and be vulnerable and be able, if you can do this thing with your body, show it, do it. If mm-hmm. it makes you feel good, do it. It doesn't matter, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but there are, there are so many stipulations, or not stipulations, but there's so many um, stereotypes mm-hmm. around um, dancing and, and mm-hmm. gender. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a shame, yeah. honestly, because there are so many young men that would be stupendous. I. When I was in high school, I took dance one, mm-hmm. and so many football players took that class because it would fulfill a PE credit, mm-hmm. and uh, they wanted to see the girls in the leotards. So, but I'm like, I'm going through this class because I started assisting yeah. the class as an upperclassman, and I'm like, these boys are not bad. Like, you could do this if you were a little more flexible. Like, if you worked mm-hmm. at it, you really could do this. Honestly, mm-hmm. honestly, mm-hmm. You could. but it's that yeah. myth that it's not masculine. That keeps people and from it the wouldn't make you gay. It would just make you good at something else. <laughs> I <laughs> give I, you I, enough outlet, yeah. possibly. Yeah, I think it's so. I agree. I, you know, I, I agree with the stereotypes and the misconceptualizations about this makes you gay as opposed to no. I like to do this, and I happen to be gay while I'm doing it. But I can also not be, or not have a label. It it really just doesn't matter. But dance allows for so much freedom. You brought up though, like the boys showing up and wanting to see the girls in leotards and what people tend to think about dancers and sex. So what are the myths? What are the things you heard? Oh. What are the things people approach you with because they know that you dance? Oh my God. So when I first started dating my ex, every time I would go, any ex actually, any ex, mm-hmm that I would go to meet their parents for the first time or go to meet somebody but like, oh, so you're a dancer, huh? Like, not that kind of dancer. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. Like, it's always, if you say dancer, it's always, a, not always, always, but mm-hmm. a lo- an annoying amount of the time. Mm-hmm. People assume that you take off your clothes for a living. Mm-hmm. Now, if that is the type of dancer you are, then that's a beautiful expression of self as well. Mm-hmm. Do what you do. Listen, I've seen some <laughs> that's not, work that's that had me amazed. Men, I'm telling you, 
I'm telling you, these ladies have skill. So, and that's such a sexy way of like moving. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I can't do it. So <laughs> look, I will learn because I'm gonna, I can learn. <laughs> but honestly, like if, if and, and, and to have the confidence to do that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's one thing. People automatically yeah. assume you're a stripper. If they don't automatically assume you're a stripper, they think that you're just like wildly sexual, like swinging from chandeliers, put your feet over your head. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you would assume that because I can put my feet over my head is that that what I want you to do in this moment right now Mm. I don't want you like (laughs) people just get so amazed like that happens like it does but can it not right now I haven't properly stretched or warmed up I would prefer like it's a whole method to the madness yeah please (laughs) you know it just becomes a very people just start to imagine things like how flexible Mm. you are and this and that like that's offensive Mm. and you (laughs) Has it ever been complimentary? Do you ever find yourself? Oh yeah, absolutely. I am blessed. Uh, uh, I would imagine, honestly, I would imagine, I I feel like being able to connect with rhythm and to be able to feel a movement in your body that Mm -hmm. is, that just, that feels right. Like you get, mm-hmm. sometimes you're in a, you're learning choreography or you're doing a thing with, with a, with a performance or even with class and you're like, oh, that feels right. That feels good. Or you, mm. somebody choreographs something you're like that feels terrible in my body. I hate that. Like, mm. and every time you do it, if you do it a million times for a million performances, every time you do it, you're like, that feels awful. Mm. Like, you know that in your body, how that feels and you mm. know what kind of movement is necessary to, to make you feel that way. So it does, I think, if the more in tune you are with your body when you dance and when you do your professional work, if, mm-hmm. if you let it carry over, it absolutely will. Mm. I'm going to have to start dancing. <laughs> All right. um, <laughs> so do you feel like um, that in dance, that there's a seductive piece to it? You talked earlier about being able to, to tell a story, to pull an audience in. Do you see that as seductive? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I th- think that in, with any emotion, you, you can do that. It doesn't always have to be, you know, sexual. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that that is part of the large gamut of emotions that we have, any emotion, and that's the beautiful thing about dance and the beautiful thing about art, any emotion you can pull in and you can pull somebody in honestly Mm -hmm. like and Mm -hmm. you feel that moment Mm -hmm. and there's not a word spoken and there's not like sometimes there's music with words but a lot of times the music has no words Mm -hmm. it's really about watching this person and that thing invoking a feeling in you Mm -hmm. and pulls you into that story Mm -hmm. it's really Mm -hmm. but I love the fact that it's like it's not dirty that it's not Mm -hmm. just this thing that's unhealthy it's this idea that it's an it's an emotional experience we're not Mm -hmm. saying which emotion but it is an emotional embodiment of an experience okay so we talked a lot about sex we've talked a lot about dancing let's let's dive in I told you I'd warm you up a little bit so talk to me a little bit about how you learned about sex what are some of those early lessons that you were like yeah that wasn't a good one or no here's what I learned I had a really great introduction to sex and sexuality um okay so sex has been a very it has been a very unhealthy thing in my life um I my (laughs) learned about sex my mom gave my sister this book and like twenty dollars and she left for the night like tell your sister about sex (laughs) and that was it (laughs) that was that was the intro Um, And then after that, I think that I just kind of used it as um, a way to feel validated by other people or to Mm -hmm. like, that was, that was the extent of my worth. Like, Mm -hmm. I will give you this thing that I have because I didn't really recognize how, how magical it was and how important it was. Mm -hmm. I was just giving it like, here, you can have this. Does this mean you like me? And they're like, Mm -hmm. well, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Not so much on the second part, but you know, people will like yeah. me for, for a while, you know, y'all like you, we kicking it, we, we cool, mm-hmm. but you know, the, the connection that I was looking for wasn't what the other party was 
looking to mm-hmm. exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a while. Um, and like I said, just um, using sex to just validate who I, who I was or to, to um, have someone else validate and mm-hmm. say like, okay, well, your, your worth is connected mm-hmm. to this thing that you are giving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I forgot the question. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn about sex, like in general? And, 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 and what have you learned over the years? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's how I learned about sex. That's what sex was for a while. And then just being more um, okay with being authentic and being myself and understanding like having that second baby and like going through that process and really being in my body during that process. The first time I was 20 years old, I didn't, I didn't even know I was in labor the first time. Mm. God took that whole experience for me. Like, I'm just going to let you walk through this one because you're not ready. Mm. <laughs> so the mm-hmm. second time I was much more aware during the present pregnancy, during the labor and delivery, um, mm-hmm. and just really asking God in that time to show me what that like show me what this womanhood is show me what this whole thing is all about and then from then from that day forward you gotta watch what you ask for from that day forward i've just been learning like the 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 heart of fast truths about what makes me me and being okay with that walking through the shame of that and then being like oh no no you're okay and this is who you are i think sex has had that same journey um Mm -hmm. it was a very shameful thing in the beginning, um, you know, you'd be embarrassed of certain things or certain, you know, sexual acts that you have with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the end, recognizing like that was just you learning. That was just you and your truth at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and you learn to appreciate yourself and your body a little differently. Mm-hmm. And just like you have different um, thoughts and beliefs about everything else in yeah. in your life it evolves it evolves exactly yeah. and becomes something whatever you need for the time you're in okay so was married sex good sex people say you get married and you do not have good sex anymore is that <laughs> true <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it was i think i was trying to save it for a long time like save the marriage um, so sometimes there were times that it was, you know, what I was looking for, but because I was looking for something that my partner wasn't always wanting to meet me with or mm-hmm. willing to, or not willing to be maybe capable of, um, we were missing a lot. Mm-hmm. It was consistent for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, if it's not there, it's not there. It sounds like though it's more so the outside stuff in life that ends up playing a role inside of the bedroom as opposed to sex just sucks or sex just gets bad. It's just life starts to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Outside stuff came in and um, changed it. And so if you, Mm -hmm. if you don't have the, like I said, capability or desire to shut off the outside stuff and just be like, okay, now it's just sex time. We know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Then, but it's so difficult to separate. It can be. That's one of the things I probably spend most of my career talking to people about, like, this is your castle. This is where sex goes. This is everything else. You have to separate them. If you can do that, you might have some success, at least in the sexual health of the relationship, but maybe not everywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's more complicated than that, but that's a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So you are a mom. Have you had the talk yet? Yeah, we've talked. It's an ongoing talk. And like anything, it evolves. We always talk about it. And, you know, the way I talk about it is different. The questions that I ask are different. But we're going to always talk about it. Mm -hmm. It can't be a one and done. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, you know what happens. (laughs) But then what do you feel about this? Like, but this boy said this to me. And then now what am I supposed to do about that? Like, I have to keep talking to you about this because it changes. It does change. It changes so much. Okay. So... What would you tell somebody who says, I don't have sexual desire anymore. Whatever happened in my life, I just don't have it. But I'm going to engage in movement. How would you talk to them about creating desire through movement? Even if it's just desire for self. I don't know. Um, I think that... 
I don't know. I think that dance movement can happen with, I think that it will come. I think that if you start to build that type of relationship with yourself through movement, then the desire will come. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think, I think that's true. I mean, it's, it would be true for me. Um, and it makes sense to be true for other people. I feel like you have to first repair your relationship with self um, mm -hmm. and really learn yourself. It's just like being at the bar and learning like, okay, my hips have to be under my ribs and my shoulders have to be down. My chin has to be up and I have to pull up through the top of my head. I have to know what, how to align all of these things mm -hmm. that just happen to be the center of my body. I have to know how to align these things in order to balance on one foot. And now, mm -hmm. And how do I stay up there? And then how, now how do I put this foot out to the side? And what do I have to do with these muscles and the, this center and this alignment mm -hmm. to compensate for whatever else is going on over here? And I'm on one foot and I'm on my tippy toes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like how mm -hmm. do, what, you have to know, so you have to be so self-aware before mm -hmm. you can enjoy the movement. That's why you go to mm -hmm. the bar first, find mm -hmm. it first. Mm -hmm. just like your chakra find it first find mm -hmm. yourself first mm -hmm. and then you can then after you've warmed up like that's how a ballet class goes you warm up at the bar first like well first you stretch mm -hmm. like girl i'm not trying to pull nothing <laughs> <laughs> it's called dancing over 30 right so you know <laughs> But then you go to the bar, you warm up, you find your center, you warm up your body, you get a little moving, more move, every combination, you move more and more mm -hmm. and meet with the bars away. And mm -hmm. then you still do a couple combinations center floor just to make sure like, okay, I don't have the bar, I'm not, I don't have a crutch, but mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm still working on my center. I'm still making mm -hmm. sure I'm balanced. Mm -hmm. And then the choreography. Now mm -hmm. you're moving, now you're dancing, now you're feeling, now you have that desire. Mm -hmm. But there's so much work to be done before that. Mm -hmm. in, on it's a scaffolding process. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me this. You are writing about dancing over 30. Tell us all a little bit about what is it? What is dancing over 30? What would we be reading if we went to check out your blog or your website? Um, okay, so that's a hard question because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 it is. Uh, it, so Dancing Over 30 started as one thing and has become something totally different. It started as me just trying to find new ways to have my talent be lucrative and mm -hmm. just kind of in, endorse my own brand and, you know, live into my self-employedness. Mm -hmm. um, and turned out to be more therape therapeutic than anything. Um, it really has turned into, because I never have labeled myself a writer at all. Mm -hmm. um, I majored in English when I first got to Western and then I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Let's do dance instead. <laughs> I don't know what I've been thinking. <laughs> um, but um, I really, writing has always been a passion of mine that I never have really um, allowed myself to dive into. So um, just in living 2020 and um, uh, exploring that love of writing and, and kind of marrying it with my passion for dance, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of evolved into what it is. Okay. Well, we're going to take a, a look at a clip. I have a clip from, um, I think, when your Instagram account, your Dancing Over 30 account. So we are going to share the screen here. And here we go. So this is you. What are your thoughts as you're just watching your movement? I love this video so much. I was taking class. Um, we were having adult class, mm -hmm. which I live for because it's so hard to find a really good jazz or contemporary class um, for mm -hmm. professionals. So just doing this movement and, and being able to like work on it. You see at the end, like it wasn't quite right, but I, it was so hard <laughs> to mm -hmm. do it that fast. Mm -hmm. And I was trying, it was like the hardest part, but I love watching that because it, it just reminds me like how hard I work and how fun that is to like get mm -hmm. a challenge and be like, okay, I'm about to do it again. Cause I'm gonna get it next time. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. so fun. And just to have opportunities to play, you know what I mean? That's how I play. That's how I, that's what I like to do. So that was a bit fun. It.
fun. That was a beautiful movement. I'm like, I was trying to do it, but <laughs> this is my gift. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm okay with that, you know? I am okay with that. <laughs> so in all dance, in all movement, in all of life, um, do you believe that there's an intersection between dance and sex and, and health? Absolutely. Like I said, it can. Um, it just depends on how aware you want to be with your body. If you want to be a great dancer, there's no way you can be great without knowing what's going on in there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how to make your body do what you want it to do. That's the name of the game. You mm -hmm. see a thing in class. Your teacher says, do this thing. And you're like, okay, you see her do it. And then you're like, okay, what do I need to do in my body to yield that same outcome? Same thing with sex. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but seriously, like, what do I need to do in my body? Cause you can't always control your partner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you can, if you have no control of yourself either, like if you don't know what you like, or if you don't know how, if I just move this way just a little bit, this mm -hmm. will be better. Like, you know what I mean? You have to know, there, like, right? and you have to be able to, ebb and flow with what's happening you know what I mean you have to be flexible enough to you know say okay well maybe I should I, maybe I should just do something a little different or mm -hmm. um you have to just go with it and you have to know how how to be in that rhythm there has to be a musicality to you um to really be able to stay in sync with another person and and their energy and what they have going on like mm -hmm. I think it parallels perfectly honestly but that's if you are aware like that in dance yeah. some people don't have the ear like that they mm -hmm. count and it's tough for them to if it's mm -hmm. not a count it's very hard which mm -hmm. is real I know a lot of people like that mm -hmm. um especially ballerinas they're like on it with the balance they got it but the rhythm sometimes mm, not there yeah Mm. So would you say your takeaway is really the idea of knowing your body and learning to flow with that body? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And not having any shame. Like your body is your body and whatever you need for that, learn it and do it. I love it. So our big question here on sex ed for adults is, is sex healthy? absolutely if you're doing it right if you have if you're aware enough and if you have the if you have the self-awareness to be able to uh, understand mm -hmm. what you need it is absolutely healthy and absolutely beautiful and necessary mm. all right folks you heard it from nicole herself dancing over 30 sex is healthy and a necessary part of life. Nicole, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and online? Okay, my Instagram, Dancing Over 30. Um, that's the number three zero. Uh, Facebook, Nicole Johnson. And you can always come to my website at dancingover30.com and check out um, performances. It's been slow since COVID, but I'll do some videos or something. Um, some photos, um, all of my essays or blogs are on there to read at your leisure. I think they're kind of entertaining or inspiring or... Read them, I they them. are. <laughs> and what's your Instagram? Instagram is dancing over 32 All right, and that's the number three zero, folks. Mm -hmm. So, Nicole, I want to thank you for joining us here oh, at the intersection you. of sex and movement. I was happy to have you here. I always love talking to you. Audience, I want to thank you for sitting and for listening and for learning. Make sure you follow me on IG and Facebook at JR Counseling. If you're here on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe below. And always like, follow, share. We'll see you next time.